Howdy's, thought I'd squeeze in another review before TF Nation. Originally I was going to say words about Legacy Beachcomber, who's really good. He's got rubber tyres and pinned wheels and is a really nice figure. Was all set to review this lad, and then just the other day I got myself a little pre-TFN treat in the form of Legacy Evolution Toxtron Collection G2 Universe Sideswipe. His names are getting a bit much, aren't they? Anyway, look at this. I had to make this the subject of today's video, didn't I? I was powerless to resist. I've mentioned before that I went through a bit of a serious big boy collector phase in the early 2000s, and as a result I used to be all snobbish about garish colour schemes and just fun in general. Good lord am I glad I grew out of that. These days colour schemes like this are very much my thing. Like just a few weeks ago I picked up this lad who Americans would call Windbreaker and then they'd laugh about it, and I'd have to let them know that this is in fact the far more sensibly named Zap. Windbreaker has dull grey windows. Zap has beautiful, vibrant pink windows. Imagine taking a bright orange guy and deciding the pink windows were a bit much. Anyway, Zap here is pretty simple, and that colour scheme makes him just stand out. And isn't that a good thing? We have loads of plain red, blue and grey bots. A splash of colour here and there goes a long way. I really have got into the brighter designs in these recent years. Hell, I like G2 Megatron's look so much that I have two recent versions of the same paint scheme. I don't even have the original figure, I just like seeing the big baddie in green and purple. Sideswipe sure brings colour to a mould we've seen multiple times already. If you're like me, you probably already have one this particular design. I have three variations on him. I've reviewed one of them before, and the other one is another G2 Sideswipe, albeit in the more sensible black and red colours. I'd totally buy another if they added the lime green touches the actual G2 Sideswipe had. I usually don't go in for having multiples of the same mould, but I have to make an exception when the recolour adds so much. This thing is audacious, man. Bright yellow and teal, those cool orange sunset decals. The white arms and the thighs do a nice job of breaking things up a bit, although my brain reads them as being naked robot parts under his car shell, and now I wonder how he hasn't got a tan from how bright the rest of him is. Also, check out his silver feeties. I don't know if it's just me, but I feel like a little extra has been getting spent on paint apps recently. The back of his body is a bit wide and square, something I think only the gigawatt version of the mould gets away with thanks to his gold wing doors. You know what, if the biggest gripe I have with a mould is that it's a bit square from one side then maybe it's a pretty good mould. I mean we know it is, there's currently 14 uses of it out there and it's been referred to as the Autobot Seeker mould by some folks. Honestly I can get behind that. Sideswipe's pal Sunstreaker had a new mould around the same time and people barely mention it. They use it to make a spin out on Cordon and it hasn't been seen since. Weirdly, the head on this one is actually from Red Alert. Just means he has slightly smaller horns, but that doesn't make me think any less of him. I do like the G2 Autobot logo on his shoulder. The black G2 version of Sideswipe never sported the G2 logo, not even on the original toy. That logo is so 90s that it would have probably looked odd on this guy. The sunset tampo on his chest adds a nice pop too. Also, I'm a big fan of when figures have their wheels inside their shoulders like this. I don't know why, it just feels logical to me. I guess because in my head they provide the shoulders with rotation. The Jurassic Park guy has a similar thing and I just think it looks neat. Features wise he's got a set of guns cast in that sort of blue that looks like it's already discoloured. Like look at the blue of his legs, and then the blue of his guns, and then the blue of my woefully discoloured G1 light speed. See what I mean? For some reason they've remoulded the connecting piece of the tip of his shoulder mounted gun, reducing the decent 5mm peg to a sort of weird nub. As a result it doesn't stay in well and there's been a few times where I've picked up the figure and found the tip is just missing. Not the rest of the gun, just the tip. I suppose we'll talk about articulation here. Um, he moves like all the other ones of this, bends in all the same places you'd expect a modern generations lad to bend. Now let's turn him into a car. Transformation is just as fluid as it's always been with this lad. Flip up the hood, fold away the tummy, put the arms away. Spin the waist and do the whole leg folding thing you've done so many times. I've never liked how the feet fold away, well not so much how they fold away, but more how they feel to fold away. On both my side swipes they're really stiff, almost like the hinge is going to break. Not noticed any stress marks yet, but it never quite feels good. Ooh, would you look at that Lambo. 
have a fair few yellow transformers, but this somehow feels like it's more yellow than a normal yellow. It's pretty consistent too. The roof has a slight hint of blue coming through though because of the clear plastic underneath, but I'd say this all matches up better than on Earthrise Sunstreaker. The teal hinges stick out a little bit, but by the time they distract you, you'll be too busy looking at the sunset pattern on the side here instead. Check out that teal fade at the back too. An inspired touch that adds a whole early 90s vibe to what's going on. Do wish there was a spoiler at the back, but I can live without it. It'd probably have had to been split into two parts and awkwardly hang off the back of the legs to avoid getting in the way of the knees. Or worse yet, it could have been an alleged weapon like on Legacy Breakdown. The wheels feel a bit weedy after being treated to the rubber tyres on Beachcomber. Rubber wheels just roll better, you know? Still, it's not something this mould or any in the last decade has had before, so it's pretty much a moot point. In car mode, you can awkwardly pop the weapons on the sides or cram one on top if you like, it's up to you I guess. You can shove the shoulder gun into the side of the rifle too if you feel so inclined. I guess it looks neat. Jigawatt has this nice bit of weapon storage under his larger hood, which was a fair bit more elegant than, than this. It's nice when weapons store away neatly, but I get why it's a low priority when it comes to designing these guys. So what's next for Sideswipe? Will we see this mould again? They could do a more accurate Black G2 one. That seems obvious. What about a mostly blue one based off the GoBots design? Could get a firecracker from that too. After that, I'm not sure. Probably a few more characters with hoods for chests they could go for. Maybe there's another collaborative figure they could get out of the mould. I'd go for a kit from Nightwider figure to be fair. One thing's for sure is that if they do get more mileage out of this design, it'd be a darn solid figure that will look great in almost any colour especially the more garish ones. And with that, I want to thank you for checking out the vid. I'll hopefully see you all at TF Nation. Feel free to say hi and show me what robots you got. Do a like and subscribe if you feel like it, and I'll catch you next time for a post-TFN haul and chat video. Laters!